Good evening ladies and gentlemen, my name is Baker Bakertron and welcome to another game of Homeworld. It is exactly one week until Homeworld Remastered is released and I'm fairly excited. There's already videos up of the opening up of the Collector's Edition. Mine hasn't arrived yet. In fact, mine will probably take a while to get here but you know, it's coming and I'll get it on Steam anyway just so I can play it as soon as it's released and I'm gonna book the day off work and it's gonna be fun and awesome and yeah I'm looking forward to it anyway back to a homeworld classic as you can see this is a rather odd looking map um I really should have looked up the name of it first oh well uh yes yeah, so ordinarily as you may or may not be aware in games of Homeworld, the two motherships tend to move towards the centre of the map where the biggest resource patch is and then fight it out between them there. But that's not quite going to happen this game. Although this player is moving towards the middle, this guy is just sitting here not doing anything and I should introduce them. So I, I'm not referring to them as this guy. Anyway, this person here, this sort of Higaran greyish, this is... oh dear. Prez Emas 707 Collector under attack. Oh, and his collector's under attack. Oh, it's just a ship chassis scared. research okay, yes. complete. Prez Emas 707 Assault and his opponent, the sort of greenish yellow person, is Skynet. It was a far easier <laughs> name to say. And it looked there for a second that Skynet was going to start the fight, but he's pulling back a little bit now. Um, in terms of resource harvesters, it's two controllers, three collectors. I think that's all of them for 707. And this is Skynet, and I can't just select them all. Skynet has only oh has four collectors and only one controller. So I'm not quite sure who's going to have the income advantage there. Resourcer under attack. Because in having the second controller is possibly useful, but I don't think not having it is causing it so many problems. Actually, now there's a fifth resource collector arriving. He could probably do with a second controller. But we'll have to possibly wait and see, just in case there's... Well, um, let me start the sentence again. Wait and see if there's sort of a queue forms to dock with these harvesters. Because if there is a queue, then obviously it will be useful to have a second controller. If there isn't a queue, then the second controller would be a waste of resources. And I should... Only one research ship built for 707. Skynet has also only built one. They both started with two. And they both seem to be doing pretty much the same... Well... Scouts, light like corvettes, and repair corvettes, which for some reason I started to see a lot more often than I thought I used to, which doesn't make sense because these games are just in, uh, they're not in like data order or anything. But anyway, the fighting clearly, as you can see, has started. Aren't you glad I'm commentating this? Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to know that at all. Anyway, so I think Skynet got a nice little advantage off with um, 707's ships not moving and in fact they're not really moving that much as it is, well these are corvettes so they won't move uh, there we go, we've got these repair corvettes moving in and hopefully they will start repairing things fairly soon they do have a tiny little gun on the bottom I think it's the weakest gun in game possibly but so they could really do with healing things additional reinforcements coming in from Skynet. Skynet's problem is that his reinforcements are obviously going to take longer to get into battle. Which means... Well, which it just gives 707 a tiny advantage of just a few just a few seconds more of having more ships in an area. But Skynet also, however, has the support for get out first. And since 707's repair corvettes aren't healing anything, that I think is going to give Skynet a, a, quite a big boost. I don't think 707 really has anything heavy enough to take out that support figure. He does have his own support figure out now. 
Well, that's a fantastic view. Let's see if we can get a slightly more exciting view. No. Nope. F. There we go. This isn't in remastered. I said it last game. I'll say it again. This view better be in remastered. Otherwise, I'm gonna be so uh, disappointed. So let's just zoom out and see if we can sort of make sense as to what's going on. I mean, honestly, Skynet, not Skynet, 707. I'm really not liking the fact that all these repair corvettes. I mean, he's got, how many does he have out now? He, well, a lot of them appear to have died. But, yeah. And I think... Is that an assault figure? That is an assault figure from Skynet. So it does kind of look like that Skynet is slightly ahead in terms of research and possibly economy. That may be that second resource controller that 707 got out. Uh, 707 still on the... It looks like five resource collectors and two controllers. And now this is the... Ah! You're not meant to be able to do the pilot view for enemy ships. Um, uh, second controller out now for Skynet as well. And the mothership is under fire. As we can see, this game, in theory, could go on for a very long time with the amount of resources that are available. Uh, Iron Cannon figure coming out now. Okay, I'm going to turn off pilot view because it's just... Well, it's, it, it, it's one of those fun little things, but you don't want to overuse it. I'm sure there was something else I could say there, but I'm still trying to get into commentating again. Uh, it is a skill that sort of needs to be developed. It's a lot of improvisation, a lot, a lot of talking, and a lot of sort of putting together bits of information as they happen in real time and speaking about them. It's, it's, it's harder than, than I thought it would be. Anyway, support forgets doing their job healing up the night. The little Corvette Wars. This. Ah, yes. So, two support forgets. Are they both healing? Yes, they are both healing. Plus five repair Corvettes are going to be doing a lot more healing than just the single support forgets for Skynet. And in terms of the Strycraft battle, it's, it's. It still could go either way, I think. Um, although I think the Skynet Corvettes here are outnumbered by uh, yes, 13 light Corvettes of 707. I think 707 is starting to gain the upper hand. He's got the iron cannons out, he's got some more support frigates. These assault frigates I just think aren't going to be doing enough damage. And yes, he's, he's certainly now sort of winning the Strikecraft battle. And of course we must remember that one of the advantage of that, that Prezmas 707 has is his mothership's guns, which, uh, well, I saw firing a few seconds ago. They're not fantastic, obviously, but, you know, every little helps, so... Now Sk uh, Skynet has been forced to withdraw, but he does have quite a nasty force here, including uh, interceptors, his own ca iron cannon figures coming out, no Hyperspace support figures. Signature detected. Um, Super capital ship drive research Something complete. hyperspacing. Uh, support figure. Destroyer available for construction. But as you've just heard from Karen, hopefully, if the voices are loud enough, uh, destroyers will be coming out fairly soon. So both sides taking this moment to sort of regroup. So let's see if we can get a better count of what they've got. One support frigate there, two support frigates for Skynet. Uh, two assault frigates, three assault frigates, four, five assault frigates, and two iron cannon frigates. Versus three support frigates and three iron cannons. So in terms of frigates, I think Skynet could might well win this. He just needs to sort of d deal with the enemy strike craft. That's the thing he is going to be struggling against. And one of those ways is to do a kamikaze attack. Uh, he took out maybe three, four light corvettes. As... But he damaged a lot more and that's why those attacks just took out another three. And so that was actually quite effective and 
in terms of taking out ships, but uh, don't know if it was enough. But now we can see the capital ships starting to go against each other. Uh, quite annoying that they both have the same iron cannon colour. Because iron cannon shots are... I mean, to be honest, I know the remastered version is going to look fantastic, but for a 15 year old game, I still think that homeworld capital ship battles are really something special. More iron cannon frigates, more support frigates, etc, etc. Uh, so they, they looked a bit like bombers for a second, which kind of would be an odd, odd choice for this guy net to go. Simply because it's the, it's the um, but he's losing in two ways: strikecraft and the amount of repairs that this force here is able to throw out. I mean, there's only two repair corps that's left. Uh, Skynet has done a good job of focusing them down, but I, they were he healing a heck of a lot. And but yes. So I think those repair corvettes really did quite possibly pay off in the end for 707. I think it's going to come down to really who gets a missile destroyer out first. So it's something like a missile destroyer, or a grav well generator, or a defense. Oh no, both sides are Kushan. We can't do a defense field for it. So missile destroyer or grav well generator will really win the strike craft battle for one side. Otherwise, in terms of strikecraft, they're actually both fairly even now. Although I think 707 has a slight advantage, numerically speaking. Simply because he's got these at the back that aren't doing anything. And obviously, as you've seen, first destroyer out. That's just going to start swinging things more in favour of Prez... Prezimas? Prezmas? Uh... It's, I'm probably really insulting some. So it's probably like a really simple name in some foreign country, and I'm probably really annoying the person Frigate who knows lost. how to pronounce it. But I, I'm terrible with pronouncing names correctly, as you probably are aware. Anyway, to get back to the interesting point we've seen there, the destroyer obviously Frigate takes a few seconds lost. to get into battle, and. To be fair though, Skynet has the larger frigate force. Uh, his own support frigates are getting focused down, but, uh, but he's doing, done the same to the opponents. Um, let's see if we can get a better view. Yes, yeah, so in terms of support frigate numbers, they've both got two and one each heavily damaged. Or at least they both had two. I can't see uh, Skynet's ones anymore. I believe they may be slightly on the dead side. So, uh, 707 has the support frigate advantage, but I think in numbers of frigates, I think it's Skynet. I can just do this kind of So, 4 and 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 frigates of varying types for Skynet. Now, Skynet doesn't have the support frigates out, so as you can see, these are healing up quite a lot of the damage. Although, these frigates, well, these frigates are coming and focusing down this one, which isn't getting healed, or not getting healed. So, really, it's going to come down to who can, well, can 707 sort of control the support frigates well enough to keep all his ships in the fight. The numbers are that he can put one support figure on each of his ships, but then uh, oh, we might have a collision here. There we go. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the remastered version will make collisions look a bit nicer. Okay, so all that happened is that the destroyers just seem to bounce, but it took a lot of damage. The mother ship also would have taken a lot of damage, but it can take a lot of damage, and that was really that was not a good move for uh, 707, honestly. We've seen a lot of uh, mother ships and, and destroyers ramming each other before. It can be incredibly useful. Think, oh, there goes another ship to a collision, and another one. So, I don't know whether it's on purpose, but Skynet, Skynet's mother ship has 
wrecked one destroyer and now has taken out a third frigate and that's quite impressive and all of a sudden there's a hell of a lot of strikecraft out for Skynet and it looks like 707 is sort of on the ropes a little he does have two destroyers out but one of them's almost dead uh, his support frigates or his own frigate forces are now looking very very small and 707 has has sort of clawed his way back into this. Oh. That, that, I don't think the mothership can move backwards, so I think that was just a bit of miscontrol by 707. Unless 707 really was, you know, death or glory attack on the enemy mothership. But I don't think, think that was the case. I think it was honestly just a bit of bad control. And now definitely 707 is going to be struggling and obviously the harvesting is still going on but I, th I think, I believe that uh, Skynet has one or two more resource controllers, uh, collectors sorry not controllers, than his opponents and I think that's really helped him sort of rebuild his forces quickly after that first initial attack and the kamikaze and ships into the mothership has been the big deciding factor, I think. And honestly, if that hadn't happened, this would have been a lot closer. It's kind of looking like that Skynet. It, it's now Skynet's game to lose. Frigate lost. I mean, you shouldn't laugh at two destroyers. It's 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 quite a still quite a hefty force. But there's no support frigates with them. The missile destroyers are going to be. Well, the missile destroyer is kind of in a bad position, really. Does it target the capital ships or does it go for a huge strikecraft swarm? And it's it's going for this. Well, it's just taking out a frigate at the moment. But I'd be surprised if it even manages to kill this one frigate before going down. And actually, the frigate withdraws. Skynet kind of pulls that frigate back. And now the missile destroyer is going after the, the strike craft, but they just fly out of range. And it's really, really not looking good now. Destroyer lost. For uh, 707. So I think it's safe, fairly safe to call this as uh, second, well, yet another destroyer coming out for Skynet. So, congratulations to Skynet. Uh, commiserations to. Prezimas 707. That was quite a cool game actually. It's nice to see an attack going in fail and then a player sort of pull it back through quite cool maneuvering. And I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, etc. I'm going to be doing my best, as I said many, many times, to do more videos in sort of the run up to Home of the Masters release. Um, fortunately, work at the moment, there's no work for me to do, so I'll have some spare time with a bit of luck. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed watching. I'm just sort of filling out the dead time before the game properly ends, because I, I, I kind of feel bad for ending the cast Frigate before lost. the game's over, just in case, you know... The mothership is under fire. Uh, 707 could just launch four heavy cruisers right now and win the game, and you never... You're never quite sure, but I think it's pretty much over at the moment. One last destroyer, heroically going down fighting. This is going to look so good in remastered versions. I still want to see what the multiplayer is like with the squadrons. The mothership they better not. If, if they've put fighter squadrons into Homeworld 1 multiplayer, it's. Uh, Lost. Yeah, that's my views on the subject. So, this could take a while, so I'm definitely going to end it now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. No, that's not the button. Oh, what have I said it to? That one. No. Oh, no, that one. It's something like that. Oh, um, okay. Uh...
let's. Why isn't this working? 